This is Nico. Uh, he's been my partner for the last six and a half years. He's a German Shepherd. He's about eight years old. Uh, he's dual trained in narcotics and in patrol work. This is Canine Hero. He is a uh, three-year-old Belgian Malinois, is the breed. He is from the Czech Republic. He is uh, a dual-purpose dog, so he's uh, able to search for suspects, missing persons, uh, locate items, as well as trained in narcotics detection. My partner's name is Zeke, he's a Belgian Malinois. We've been together from the very get-go, from the start of basic uh, canine school. We got to pick him out, and that's where it started. He is uh, extremely motivated, um, very focused at work. At home, the op complete opposite, completely lazy. This is Volker. He is a long hair German Shepherd. He came from Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, when he arrived in the States at LAX, I went with the trainer to pick him up. So I actually picked him up on his first day here and we brought him back and I've had him ever since. This is uh, Rocco. He's a four-year-old uh, Dutch Shepherd. Um, just a different, he's a Belgian Malinois. I just go by a different name. Um, and he's he was uh, born and raised in Holland, and then he came over here in, to the States in uh, November. You know, he's really, really good at uh, doing article searches. Um, he is a new dog, so we're learning every day. He really likes to use his nose, um, but all around he's just a really, really good dog, and he's super social, so that's what we, we want on our, uh, our unit. So um, we use these dogs specific because they're drives. They're real high, um, it's the same as if you were to play with your dog in the backyard and throw a ball, they have that real you know, big desire to go chase the ball. Um, we use dogs just with a higher level of that to where you know, when they, they, they'll do anything for toys, they'll do anything you know, to, to play and win the game. So um, you know, on the streets when we use the dogs, they're not vicious, they're not mean, they don't bite people because they're aggressive. They do it because the one, they're obeying us, and the other uh, thing is that they think it's a game. So you know, the, the ultimate uh, end for them is that they think that they're playing the game and that they win. They find the object that they're looking for, whether it's a missing person, a firearm, or narcotics. Um, you know, when they succeed at the game and they get their reward, that's all. When we come back here to the Sheriff's Office and we're working patrol, we train every night with the dogs. I try to get an hour of training with them every single night. And every other week we train for 10 hours with the, the canines. Where we do different exercises, we have to do a, a little bit of everything like I explained. We have to do article searches, obedience, uh, searches for suspects, searches for you know, different items. So we try to run an array of, of searches off, on leash, off leash. Um, that way the dog gets exposed to a lot of different things. Um, so it never ends. They're always learning and they're amazing animals. They're super smart and you can make your dog as great as you want or if you want them to do some, you know, something super good, you know, you can train that for. We, we're always you know, training, I love it. So to me, I, I can't believe I get paid sometimes to come out and train with them. We have a, a remote uh, on us that we can hit a button and it opens the door, uh, activates it on the patrol car, uh, which allows the dog to come out and assist us if we're in a physical altercation with the suspect. Then the dog can come and assist us in apprehending uh, the subject. Hey, Sheriff's Department, turn around, put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. I'm not going back. Stop. I'm not going back. Stop. 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 You're going to get bit. Going back. Stop resisting. right now. Back. <laughs> Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Put your hands right. behind your back. Put your hands behind your back right now. Yes, sir. So the suit, um, it, it's something that they were brought up since they were little puppies. They've been brought up, um, you know, biting. You know, we, we use the bite suit to simulate, you know, different scenarios that, you know, might involve something we, um, you know, encounter out in the street. Um, and uh, the dogs absolutely lo love the bite suits. Um, as, you, as you guys tell, they were, you know, they go crazy. Like you guys, 
you know, the perception is that the dog's, you know, vicious or, or whatnot, but you guys standing out here with the cameras, with, you know, this being a foreign thing to you guys, the dogs paid you guys no mind. They wanna, that is fun to them. Um, and they'll, they'll do it all day long. All right, so this is, what this is called runaway. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my lights and sirens on, at which point, or just my lights, but at which point he's gonna take off running. I'm gonna give him commands to stop. He's not gonna stop. Um, I'm gonna use my door pop also to send the dog out, at which he'll apprehend him down the field. So the rear of our patrol car is designed for the dogs to keep them safe when they were on patrol as well as it has a, a, a spill proof water bowl back there so he has access to water all the time. The AC has it's plumbed through the, the roof inside the kennel so he gets nice fresh air back there all the time. Uh, we also have safety measures back uh, that's associated with the rear for them. There's a temperature gauge that continually monitors the temperature of the rear of the car where the dog is. And that way, if it reaches a certain temperature during a hot summer day, what will happen is the uh, windows will automatically roll down, the horn will start honking and the lights will activate and fans will kick on, letting us know that the temperature inside is, is over the limit that we set it at. That way we can figure out if there's a malfunction with the vehicle or it's just overheating or something like that uh, where we can make sure that the dog's safe. Uh, we go to a lot of demos with the schools, uh, a lot of demos. Uh, around the area. It could be churches, uh, Boy Scouts. So you get a lot of questions from the young kids and a lot of silly questions, but it's actually more fun with the little kids because they're actually really intrigued. Everybody has a dog. Everybody likes dogs and animals. Or All our dogs do go home at night with us. So Nika goes home with me. Uh, he likes spending time with my grandkids at home and watches over them as if he was, they were part of his little pack. When we do demos, I think the number one question we get asked, people want to know all the time, is do the dogs go home with us? Um, and they do. So when I'm done with my shift, he goes home with me. Um, he knows that it's time when we go home, he gets fed, gets put away. He's ready to rest just like I am. So when I go home and I'm ready to relax and, and hang out, he does the same. Same as when I'm ready to go to work and, and go to the car, he knows the drill, he's ready to go. Puts his uh, his collar's on and, and we're out the door and, and uh, he's ready to go to work just like me. Um, and I think the second question that, uh, that we get asked all the time is, do we keep the dogs when we're done with, with being a canine handler? When we retire the dog, do they stay with us? Um, and the answer is yes. The county um, offers us, or gives us the opportunity to purchase the dog. So we, um, <laughs> everybody purchases the dog and they stay home with us. And, and at that point, they. You know, like when we're done with retirement, we want to relax, they do the same. They just become a house pet and, and hang out with us. So if we're going out to a demo, it could be at a school, Boy Scouts, um, something like it. If it's a small group with him, we're one-on-one -on -one and he's got his toy with him and, he, and he's out in an area like this, kind of on his terms, I'll let him. If, he's, if he wants to, he'll come over and he'll let you pet him like you did a minute ago. Um, I tell him, don't try and take his toy away. He, or if he starts to growl a little bit or his ears go down, then it's just kind of a warning because number one, he's with me trying to protect me and number two, he's got his toy and he loves his toy. So I tell him, don't, don't take the toy away. If, he, if we are in play mode and I'm playing with him, playing out with the tug toy like you guys were earlier, then I might tell you, go ahead and you can play with him also. So it just depends on the dog. Bottom line is anytime a, a canine is used, it doesn't always look the best, so people don't have a full context of what's going on. 
The dog is a safety tool. That's what it is. It's to protect us, deputies, and the public. So sometimes it is safer to use a dog to get someone out of somewhere um, versus us going in there and having to get them. You know, I think people, without getting the full context, jump to conclusions because anytime you see a dog, you know, apprehend somebody, it doesn't look nice. It doesn't. But ultimately, if you weigh all the factors, what the person's wanted for, what they're priorly known to do, etc., sometimes it, it, it is much safer to use a dog than us. If you're on a call for service, a lot of people ask if they can pet your dog, which, you know, at this point I'm actually comfortable with, I'm comfortable with him, but it's just certain situations, uh, depending on if you're looking for a suspect, you know, he might be amped up because you were looking for that suspect, but they surrenders. Um, so they really weren't, uh, you know, utilized to their, you know, maximum extent. So there's just certain times where the public will ask when it's probably not a good idea. I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that, but um, it, it's just something that we have to gauge. But in a scenario like what we're in today, like you guys can come up and pet him all day long. He loves it. He'll, he'll lay on his back and he likes belly rubs. And um, but you know, there's another perception of the, the canines that they're they're vicious. They're not. I take him home every night. Um, he's great with my, my boxer. Um, he's great with anyone that I bring over to the house. He's not mean or vicious. Um, he's essentially kind of like a pet at home. Um, he just happens to go to work with me every day.